Hey, good, good afternoon, everyone. Um, uh, thank you so much for giving me your time. Um, um, this is Mark from Right Line Trading, and I wanted to show you and go over our Forex platform. Um, we've just optimized the complete program for the first time. And um, I have to tell you, it's, it, 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 I think you're going to see um, it's, a, it's an amazingly effective um, tool for trading. Uh, I'm going to go over each of the individual indicators. I'm not going to go to any slides. Um, you know, I do want to just off the top of my head um, provide you with the, you know, with uh, the, uh, the government required disclaimer. You know that we're not certified um, trading commodity advisors. Uh, uh, the, there's substantial risk associated with um, with trading. You know the the information that you get here is for educational purposes only. Uh, right line trading is not responsible for any uh, losses incurred in the market. Uh, we recommend that you consult a financial advisor before making any any trades. With that said, let me go over our trade scanner and our platform. Now we've just added the Ikimuku Cloud. I can't pronounce it, but it really does add. Now we're in the process of modifying it. So it's not going to be so intrusive in color. Right now, it doesn't have an opacity input, nor up the ability to change the color of the cloud. So we're going to make it so it's much, much less intrusive in our trading. But you can get some terrific trades off the cloud. And the cloud really acts as a tremendously strong area of support and resistance. And it's really um, a MACD based tool that, um, that combines momentum in a really, really nice way. I've, I've um, been looking at a lot of YouTube videos on it, and I really, really like the way it performs. So we're probably going to keep it. And I wanted to add it because it's going to be one of the indicators you're going to get on this platform. Now, let me just, I'm going to go over fairly briefly all the different indicators on, on the platform. I know a lot of you are familiar with them, um, but I'm going to go over them briefly anyway. Now, the most important indicator that we look for is the multi time frame alignment of our trading tool. Now, this market we're looking at is the pound dollar. Now, the pound dollar is in, goes out to four digits. Now, when um, a Forex market goes out to four digits, each increment is equal to a pip. If it goes out to a fifth digit, each e increment is equal to one hundredth of a pip. Now, the price of a pip, when the second number is the USD, I believe is ten dollars a pip. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take that to the bank, but I believe on one lot, which leverages a hundred thousand um, uh, dollars of cash or money. You're going to make ten dollars a pit. Now, this is telling us that we have a, a multi-time frame alignment of the pound dollar. We're, we're trading a two Unirenko and the four Unirenko and the six Unirenko are both in strong downtrends. I don't know if you'll notice on the chart that the 50 is down and the 15 is down. Now, there's just one thing I want to change. I don't want to make it, I'll do this really quickly. Is I want to make our fast 
five. And I want to make our, um, whoops, this is the wrong one. Let me close it. I just set this up and um, I modified fast. So I want to make five. You can do what you can, you can format this however you like. I don't want to make our modified slow three, but I don't want to keep it solid. What I want to do is I want to keep it, uh, I want to make it, um, uh, dash dot. So let me reformat it. Like this. I just reset the template. Let me just find it. I'm sorry, I'm doing this right now. Hold on one second. Find our four X. Here it is, right here. We're gonna save. Okay, so we also have the same situation on the higher time frames. There's one other adjustment I need to make. Oh, I did this in reverse. I'm so sorry. Hold on one second. It's really easy to switch for me. Um oh, what a dummy. Excuse me for one sec. Here's our modified fast is seven. That's the one that should be three. And should be uh, dot dash, I'm sorry. And our modified fast is the one that should be five. And it should be, it should be solid. Now I'm gonna set these as defaults. And I shouldn't be setting up the platform here, but I made that one, one modification. Okay, now we're ready to go. Now, the 50 is down in red. The 15 is down in red. And I'll talk about these moving averages in a second. And the same pattern is present on the four Unirenko and the six Unirenko. The 15 has crossed the 50 to the downside. And the 50 is red and the 15 is red. So you have this multi time frame alignment strong to the downside. Now we have three down alignments. This is the strongest and this is where you want to take your short trades. Today in the live trading room, I had three winners and a loser. The loser was a perfect setup that was not successful, and not every perfect trade is going to be. We made up, we made up right around five hundred dollars. Um, my dome read five thirty-five, and my uh, my the back end of Ninja Trader read four eighty-five. I don't know which one is accurate, but right around five hundred. Your entry is right here, and you've got this move down. It's a perfect entry and configuration. And this move, maximum excursion, is 31 pips. It's a really nice trade. Now, we're just talking about looking at entries with the background bias dark pink. That's the only indicator um, we're assessing right now. Now, it, as far as I'm concerned, it is the most powerful indicator on the chart. When you have a multi time frame alignment of trend, it sort of lights up all the other indicators. They become so much more powerful as entry signals. When you have this multi time frame alignment, that this is where you start trading with incredible precision. Now, um, Wednesday, I had a much tougher day in the room. 
I still wound up making over 300 bucks, but I had to take a lot of trades. And I took some trades without this pink background. So this is where I recommend you stay. Stay in the area that's the sweetest spot to trade. And you'll notice here, you have, again, you have a terrific short trade here and move down. I'm not going to scale it, uh, but it's a really, really nice trade. It looks like it, it's easily 20 plus pips. Now, what we want to do, before I move on to another indicator, I just want to go over a little bit of our trading methodology. Because the methodology is really sound and leverages essentially everybody else's mistakes. And that's really what we want to try to do. Every entry that we take looks to take it on a retracement. Like we want to catch traders in the wrong direction. Now, you've got two candles up here. And these traders have decided that the market has hit a bottom. Now, God only knows why they've decided that the market is going to turn here. But they have. And they're going to buy the market long. Our job is to stay in the direction of the multi-time frame trend, which is also the direction of money flow. Because when there's this multi-time frame alignment, it almost never happens by chance. It happens because the institutional traders are putting big money to work in order to bring all these time frames around and align them into our direction. So we look for the counter trend traders and we look to run them over. We just don't run into a trade like right here and anticipate we're going to get a continuation. We need a trade entry. And we don't always get a trade entry on a great move. And it's really not required. We need to get entries that, that are trading really recently with, with an 80% predictive value and be able to avoid taking losers. If we go through the chart, now we don't get a great entry here. Now, the other thing that I have to mention is that we are going to have a problem with the candle color outline because it is revised when you close the charts. It's a fractal analysis. It's the three-line indicator. It changes color when you close and open. Um, it's just... I don't want, if I say it's Ninja Trader, they're going to call me and yell at me, but it's the fractal nature of the analysis. And this is most likely an entry and a continuation trade. And it happens in the dark green where the 50 is up. The 15 is up. Key, the 15 is crossed the 50 to the upside. And you get a pullback to support. What does that pullback mean? It pulled the pullback means that sellers tried to turn the market. We didn't get a pullback candle, we had a pullback wick. So we've we've trapped a lot of sellers in this candle. But the bulls ultimately took control. And so the market moves up with two forces. One, the addition of new buyers, and two, the fact that all of the sellers that created this wick are gonna get stopped out as the move rises. And this is the key color. Now in this webinar, I'm not gonna go over the, the different the differing colors because they all come with enhanced risk and we don't want to trade with enhanced risk we want to trade with minimal risk that's part of what we're doing with this package we're giving the trade scanner 
Now, the trade scanner allows you to take this market, fold it up, put it underneath, along with 10 or 12 other markets, and only pop it when you see this alert. So you can stack these alerts. Now, if you'll notice it's blinking right now, and what it's telling you on the right edge of the chart is you've got your potential entry. And there it was, right there. There's the oscillator signal. There's the pink background bias. You've got the three line in real, in real time. The only problem with the trade is we have no volume. This is the volume right now, but you're getting an alert on an absolutely stellar entry, which we would take any time of the day if we had any volume. Now this is minute volume and it's very key because you don't want to trade a dead market. And this is how many contracts, or in this particular case, lots are crossing per minute. And it's fairly low. So this is a market that we may want to stay out of simply because it's, it's really uh, dying at this point. But the alert gave you the entry, allowed you to pop the chart, would have given you plenty of time to get this entry, and you would have got, been able to take this trade. Now, the trade would have triggered one tick below here, one pip, for the move down. Now, anything can happen in a market where there's no volume. And we would not trade it. We would not trade a market like that. But that's what this gives that's that's the power this gives you. Now I have to reset the chart. Now uh, let me talk a little bit about the Ikimo I, I, I don't even know how to pronounce it because it's fairly new. Um, it's called the Ikimoku Iki, Iki Cloud. And the reason I like it is because of it, it combines multiple math assessments. And it's really very, very simple to use. And what you're gonna do, and this is the perfect trade out of the Ikimoku cloud. And if I'm, if I'm mispronouncing it, I, I apologize. Um, I, listen, I probably listened to 10 hours of YouTube videos on it, Ikimoku cloud. And I, and I heard about seven different pronunciations. So what you're gonna look at out of the cloud is this. So I wanna show you the setup, and I wanna show you how powerful it can be. You don't wanna trade through the cloud. You wanna let the market just move through the cloud. But what you'd like to see is it move through creating higher highs, and higher lows. So as it pulls through the cloud, it then it's then going to pull back to the cloud and make it the move up. And when it does, it's a very powerful move. I'd say 90% plus of those moves are going to fire off. Now, in order to get that 90%, you need this green background bias you need this green 50, you need this green quant, but this, and you only need one. Move up, move down, move up, pull back. We were retracement traders, and then boom, up you go. And I'm sure I'm gonna be able to find trades like that. In fact, I saw them today um, in the markets we were trading. I'm, I'm just working on this right now. Um, we just added it a couple of days ago, but we're going to keep it. And Sergio's in the process of revising it. And uh, what he's doing is he's going to give us the ability to change the color in here and to change the opacity. Like this is too opaque. I don't. This this bothers me too much. I don't want to see so much blue. Now the other thing is, I don't think it matters whether it's blue or whether it's um, orange here. It's still acting as the same area of support and resistance. 
and you still want to go long above it and short below it. So I'm simply going to make mine gray, very light opacity. I don't care whether it's down or whether it's up. I want price to retrace to it off of, you know, creating that pattern and then move up on the start green. That's what we're looking for in a great uh, trade off the cloud. It's a lot easier for me to just to say cloud. Um, let me find it. Let me find a trade. Now you see when you're trading below the cloud here, this is where you're going to get your best trades. Now I can show you any. Uh, later on, I'm going to go. And I'll, sh I'll show you any uh, forex pair you like. Now when there's no background bias, it's much riskier to trade. And I would not advise to trade. Now I have to um, see reset. Because Ninja doesn't do a great job on this fractal analysis. Because right here, you have an entry. Now, I can't say that the three line, which is the multi time frame assessment of order flow, stochastic, and momentum, which gives us this candle halo blue, you don't have all these black halos. This is simply an epiphenomenon of closing and reopening the platform and Ninja not knowing how to make an assessment of an indicator that does a multi time frame assessment of three different uh, individual forces, momentum, order flow, and stochastic. But this is a terrific entry if you have it right here. You're above the cloud. This is slightly weaker background bias, but if you get a real great entry, you can take it. And this is a very, very nice one. 21 pips. This is going to evolve very quickly into green. Now, I wouldn't take anything here. And you're only looking for two or three great trades on each instrument because you can watch 10, 12, 13 instruments all at the same time that are all going to give you these alerts. I mean, you're going to get more perfect entries than you can handle. Now, we've broken the Forex system down into only one quant. Now, these are correlative markets. Now, when the, when the pound dollar falls, there are certain other um, Forex markets that also fall and certain Forex markets that rise. In this line are three of those markets, and they correlate in the direction of the Forex and I'm sorry, in the direction of the market we're trading with a correlation coefficient of 0.7 or greater, which comes out to 70% or greater. So we want those correlative markets when we get this downtrend. Now you see here, money flow correlated perfectly with our dark pink background. Here, money flow strongly predicted that price was going to fall. And it did fall, but it didn't fall coherently because we didn't have the strongest background. So we're looking for simply them to correlate. And they often, right here, perfect correlation of money flow with the direction of the market. And you have to remember, unlike most other platforms that do all their assessment off of price on the chart, off of MACDs off the chart, oscillators off the chart, and data off the chart, not one single indicator we use, except the oscillator and the Ikimoku, except 
use data from the chart. This is looking at other markets and the direction of those other markets. So that green line in no way has anything to do with this price rising. This price is rising because this line is green. This line is not green because this line is rising. This background color is green because the two higher time frames are aligned just like our trading chart. Not because our trading chart is aligned this way. This is what gives these, these are called independent predictors of the, the future direction of price because they have nothing to do with how price moves on our trading chart. If you don't make that disassociation and they're linked, then, then the indicator analysis is useless, which is, which is the case on 99% of the indicator analysis of most software. It has no future predictive value. Um, so that's the quant. Now, the other important indicator that you really want, now these also change when you close and open, because it's a multi-time frame assessment and trend. And what this is looking at are two of the three most important correlative markets in this quant line. One is on a fast time, a faster time frame, the other a slower, to tell you that you're trading in the direction of the markets that you want to go up when your market goes up. I mean, the easiest way to, to since I can't tell you what these markets are because it took us so long for us to assess them, the easiest analogy I can make is that we're trading the E-mini, S&P 500, which today we got three killer winners on. What the dots do is assess the direction of the NASDAQ and the Russell. So wouldn't it be better to take an E-mini long trade when the multi-time frame assessment of the NASDAQ and the Russell is also long? Well, that's what the dots do for us on the E-mini. And they're doing the same thing here on other correlative markets that are key in terms of correlation. I mean, the NASDAQ and the Russell are tightly correlated to the E-mini. I mean, the NASDAQ has its dips and, 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 and nooks and crannies, and so does the Russell. But the generalized direction of both these markets is very tight in the same, in the direction of the E-mini. Now, there are days when there's divergence, and they don't correlate so tightly. And those are tougher days to trade. Because remember, the correlation coefficient is 70% or greater. So it can drop as low as 70%. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to get fewer winners. But it's still going to allow us to avoid the losers with equal specificity. The key to becoming a successful day trader is never getting winners. It's avoiding losers. It's being able to have the software defined from you when taking an entry, a trade entry, is associated with exceedingly low risk. That is the most important thing software can do. If it can't define risk for you, it can't. It is not going to work. Now, I'm going to stick with this market for now, and then we can move to multiple markets. Because remember, you may want to. I mean, when I traded the forex markets, I looked at 12 pairs, and I'll show you what they were. Now, we have a trader who may. Come, come on board and trade these Forex markets for us. Um, I'll, I'll talk to you about what we have right now, but we're, we're adding a second trader. Now, let me find an oscillator entry. 
Now, the oscillator is an exponential oscillator. I know this is a lot if you're new and you've never heard this before, but I simply want to make this an overview. This is not a comprehensive, slow um, review, but I want uh, it. Listen, this is our trading methodology. If I put a piece of scotch tape over the pound dollar and you did not know what we were trading, the trade entries and our trading methodology are exactly the same. We use the same indicator analysis and we look for the same entries on any markets that we trade and on any time frame that we trade. I was looking at a 10 Unirenko on this market. You're, you're going to get great entries on a 10 Unirenko. They're probably going to last you maybe about an hour in duration. Um, the one that I looked at, and I'm not kidding, I'll show it to you if I can find it. It made 196 pips. So if you set up 12 markets on a 10 Unirenko and are just looking for the huge trades, you're going to get them. They're infrequent, but when they come, you're going to get 50 to 150 to 200 pips. Now, I want to show you the oscillator entry. I don't want to show you one that I would have taken, not just one that I'm going to, I, I'm going to talk about here is one I would have, you know, I want to show you one that if I saw, I would be in. And this is a tough one because we just don't get it. It's in the cloud. This is an exponential oscillator because price on our trading chart is moving in an exponential fashion. Now here's real, this is a real close. Now here's one that we may have gotten in real time. I can't tell for sure. Everything is pushed after you close and reopen. What happens? I, I, if I give you a, a quick heads up as to what happens, is what happens is predictable. It just doesn't happen in a random fashion. When, when you're trading, Ninja Trader is comparing the candle that's forming, let's say it's this candle, with the previous candle. And that's how it should be working. It should look at everything that's going on prior and compare it with, with everything that's going on on the left, on the right edge. After you close, for some reason, Ninja then makes this assessment based on the future candle, which wasn't there at the time we were trading. So everything on your chart gets pushed to the left, either one or two candles. So if you're doing a retrospective analysis, it's very reasonable and very accurate. Because if you mark out your entries in real time and then close and reopen, you're going to see that the entry isn't there anymore, but it's simply pushed back a candle or two. So right here, whoops, that's right here. If we pull this over just two candles and pull this green over two candles, And remember, the same thing happens, unfortunately, with the dots. They push to the right, too. This had the potential for being a perfect oscillator entry right off the cloud and a move up. This is a great continuation trade, just stellar, and really a nice winner. I mean, there's you plenty of winners on this chart. Now we're looking at lots of days, but we're gonna we're gonna have the ability to trade. That's 29 pips. Now that's from entry all the way to the top. It's not necessarily how much you're gonna get. 
but there's no reason why you can't capture a big piece of this move. Now, the color of the dot, we just call this the dot system instead of the dot cross system. And the, the color also, just like the background bias has color, the, has different colors and different powers, so do the dots. The darker the dots, the more powerful, this is a very powerful uptrend on the slower time frame. The darkest dot. It's weaker on the faster time trend on the entry, but it immediately gets stronger. And if you look at the dot indicator, when you open it up, you can see dark green's the strongest, then yellow green, then pale green, and dark red's the strongest, red is intermediate, and light coral is the, is the weakest of the downtrends. Now, I don't really look at the color. As long as I've got a dual dot entry with the three line, which is order flow stochastic and momentum, it, I have, that indicator is on the chart. I just made it invisible. It's right here. Plot four is, um, I'm sorry, uh, plot two, two is uh, order flow. Plot one um, is stochastic and plot zero is momentum. And you see, I've made all these lines transparent because all I care about is the candle color halo of the halo. And you can change that by default to any color you like. Uh, where's the three line here? Oh. Getting tunnel vision here. Uh, here it is. Uh, my down color is magenta. My up color is blue. But you can change these to whatever down and up color you want. The thickness you change up here. Here's the candle outline. I have the candle outline in three, and I have the wick is three, but you can also modify the thickness of the candle outline. It's, it's totally up to you. Now, I want to just also talk briefly, and then uh, I'll look at a couple of other um, markets about R50 and R15. Now, price on our trading chart, on a Unirenko chart, does not move arithmetically. For price to turn the corner here on a two Unirenko is going to take uh, 12, it's going to take 24 ticks to turn the corner and come up. But then once, once price turns the corner, and starts to move up, it moves up with incredible speed. That is not arithmetic movement, that is geometric movement. And I just want to show you the difference. It's really important to make that discrimination. The Renko and Uno Renko move up geometrically, but don't ever trade Renko because you need you need candle wicks. And I'll and I'll show you on the left on the left edge or the right edge that we now have hybrid Unirenko's that on, on real time show you the wick inside the candle body so that you can create Japanese candlestick patterns for the first time I, I'm aware of in history and there are people who tell me it's been done before so I don't want to say it's the first time. I'll say I've never seen it before. We get to look at the wicks, even in a Unirenko chart. Now, oh, what did I do with it? What did I do with my chart here? Oh, but I just didn't click it out. I can make it over again. It's not a problem. I, I think I just might have just just uplifted out. Hang on a second. 
I'll just make it over. Um, but if you look here, this is arithmetic movement. Arithmetic movement is where the slope of the line, I remember what the slope is. The slope is rise over run. Remember that from like geometry in, um, in, uh, in high school from, from your first, uh, from 10th grade? Right here. So the slope of an arithmetic line is a constant. It can be two, it can be three, it can be four, it's irrelevant. But whatever the slope is, whatever the rise over run is, it stays the same. But on a Unirenko chart, that's not the case. When you turn the corner, and I'll need to use the, uh, the pen for this. I just want to see what the thickness is. Price goes like this, slow. And then when you get into the trend, price rises like that. And that is parabolic movement. And the slope in a parabola is constantly rising. And that's exactly how price moves on a Unirenko. Now, it doesn't move quite like a parabola because it, it, it reaches maximum speed and then tails off. But for our purposes, it's really parabolic movement. It's not arithmetic. And this is also known as geometric movement. It describes some uh, metric that moves in a geometric fashion. So it's geometric movement. And this is why we've created these moving averages. Now I have to rebuild the chart because I think I just blew it away. It'll only take me a, 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 a millisecond because I have the template. And I'll show you how easy it is to rebuild a chart. It takes you two seconds. And I'll, in fact, I'll do it right here. Just go to your new, go to your chart, pick your instrument. Um, let's pick a different one. We'll pick the pound and the end. And we'll hit OK. And there it is. And all we have to do is put in our template. We have a, we only we only have about twelve million templates. And there it is. But now we're looking at a different market. And now we have a different ba a dashboard. You look up here, we just roll this to the side. There's the pound dollar. So it's somewhere on the chart. I didn't destroy it. And here's the pound yen. You see the pound yen is telling us we got nothing going on right here. There's no alert. Our 50 is yellow. Now background bias is good. No, we have, we have no background bias at all. And you see right here on the right edge, we had zilch, so we wouldn't even open this instrument. So before we look at some of the trades, let's let, let me just look at this move down. This is just such an incredible. Here's the retracement right here on the wick. Early in the move, you've got this entire move. Now, if you if you have a big risk tolerance, you can trade through that reversal candle. And the guy who's going to be trading, we, we have a guy named Gary Banks, who today made 
20,000, I kid you not, in a live account, he made $20,000 trading at 4 a.m. From 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. I am not joking you. Um, I'll sh he, he got an 80 tick trade with five contracts on crude. He takes risk, but he made, today he made $20,000. And he's gonna be trading with all of us. And you too, if you come aboard, but you're gonna have to get up at 4 a.m. Eastern to trade with him. He would have traded through and he would have gotten 44. I would not have. I would have been out on a reversal candle right here at 28. Now I would now I would have taken this, but we're gonna we're gonna take an exit strategy that's gonna move us out of this trade in lots. So we would have been all out of this trade by the time it hit 28. Now getting back to where I was what I was talking about was this, in order to track exponential movement, remember, this is a mathematically optimized chart. You can't just throw stuff in that's been around forever because it doesn't work. Now, to track price appropriately, and you see this one, I just have to change the 50 and the 15. I didn't change it on the template appropriately, I'm sorry. Let me, it'll take me two seconds. The modified fast is the one that's the three and the uh, dashed. Change the color too. I don't want to do that. And it's not solid. It's dashed. And the modified slow is the one that's, you can make it yellow, it doesn't matter is the one that's solid and five. Now what I have to do is let me set these as defaults and set these as defaults and hit okay. Just so the chart doesn't look funny. Now I've got, to, I've got to reload the chart, hit F5 in order to get back the background bias. Because like I said, Ninja is gonna play tricks on us. And let's save the template, save as our uni, Forex. Okay, now this is a 50 EMA of a 50 EMA. That no one's ever done. I know, I, I've never heard of anyone doing that. This one is a 15 EMA of a 15 EMA. Now what, by taking the EMA of the EMA, we, we are, it's, it's pretty amazing what happens. You keep the speed, but you lose the bumpiness. And I'm gonna show you how our 15 EMA of an R EMA stacks up against the regular 15 EMA. It trades much better. Now here's a, here's a 15, which I've already pre-formatted. Now you'll notice, for, you forget about the background bias. Uh, see how price lumpy, makes it a little lumpier. Um, when price comes down here, it bends the 15. And you see right here, you get this retracement and it bends it up. Our line is much more stable. It's, it's just as fast, but it creates a significant greater degree of stability. And that's what we're looking for. So we get the speed of the 15 EMA and the smoothness of an SMA, which is very rare. So, on this one candle pullback, the EMA bumps and the R line doesn't even budge. It's straight down. It's a much better momentum assessor than this 15. 
which, which, which shows like momentum is giving, giving away. So let's get rid of it. And just go back to our template. Now, this is a completely different instrument. We're now on the pound yen. And look at this entry right here. I mean, if you don't take this entry, you gotta get, you gotta stop trading, and you gotta move to a different profession because there's the oscillator signal. You've got dual dots, slow and fast. You've got the three line candle halo is surrounded. You've got the quant. You've got everything. And in fact, the bonus on this trade is that you even get a bunch of crazy traders pushing the market, calling a bottom here, and giving you an up candle. And I love to trade in the direction of the multi time frame trend with dual dots in the oscillator running over all the buyers in this candle. I mean, I'm not going to say any trade is where you can back the truck up to the bank, but this is about as low a risk trade as you can possibly ever see. Now, that's a 38 pip trade from entry to maximum excursion. You're not going to get all 38 because you can never pick where the bottom is. Um, but. I, I, I'm scaling it just to show you the extent of the potential of the trade. And it's a gorgeous trade. Now, right here is another potential trade. Remember, if only if we get this green pulled over two candles. The one thing you're going to have really, really hard pressed to find is a, is a loser because they just don't show. Very tough to get a loser. See right here, you need a pullback for the continuation trade. And here you go again. Now this is not a big move, but it's a winner. And here's the huge winner. And this is just one market. I mean, you can project as many as you like. Now, I'm going to show you how many I used to trade at the same time. I used to trade one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I used to trade 11 markets. I like the dollar crosses. But on the European session, the pound crosses and the euro crosses rock. I mean, remember, if you're trading this at 4 a.m. or 2 a.m. Eastern time, there's no American market, really. And you've got all the Europeans, all the Asians, and the Americans. They're trading the Forex market. Uh, and they're trading the DAX. There's nothing really, I mean, you can trade the FTSE, you can trade the Indian Stock Exchange, they're good markets. But for, but this is where the money is. It's in the da It's in the NASDAQ, I'm sorry, it's in the Forex, and it's in the DAX. And these are all, all, all other metrics that we use. So this is where the money is. So I'm going to I'm going to see if there are any questions. Um, it's a it's a I'm telling you it's a fabulous platform, and it really is going to give you great entries. Just have to have patience. I'll show I'll show you quickly just one more market, and then I'll answer any questions. I don't I don't want, I don't want to bore people, uh, and I'll just pick I don't know. Uh, I'll pick the euro pound. And let's see what we get. Well, let's see what we see. Now the Euro Pound dashboard comes up. Uh, we've got no alert. 
let's take a take a quick peek. And we don't have enough days to load here. We only got ten, two. Let's load twenty five days. Now there are lots of forex engines out there. All this junk. I'm telling you, they, they don't work. I'm I'm, I'm gonna. I want to show you one other thing that I probably shouldn't. Um, you know, I'm going to hold off because I don't want to make it too complicated. And really, this is all you need, all the information you need. Now, if you come aboard, I will sit with you and work with you on the system. It's really very intuitive. Um, it's not hard to trade. Now, let me make sure here there's no loser. Um, now, this is a potential loser. If you pull this over to the left, one candle, right here, and you get your pink background, and you enter here, this is not going to make it. That's the first loser I've seen. Now, if you have if you have the three line, and this candle's haloed, you've got a gorgeous long. My gut feeling is you'd have it, you just don't have it because of its recalibration. Same thing here if you have the three long. Gorgeous entry long. Same thing here. Gorgeous entry long. Now here you just don't have an entry short. Now here you're trading in the cloud. We're gonna respect it. This would have been an entry. Some traders on this cloud would just take this one tick breakthrough and take the trade. I'm still learning a lot about the cloud. Um, traders will take a tick break through that bottom of the cloud. Let's just look at this trade. Killer trade right here. Now here is a loser. I'm not I'm not, not going to hide it. That's a great trade and it doesn't make it. Here's a pullback and here's a beautiful winner. Like I said, eight to eight out of ten trades are going to make it, and you're not going to make it. You're not going to get two out of ten trades. You trade with 80% precision, you're going to make a lot of money. Potential trade, because we don't know the direction of the three line. So that, that was a trade, but it's a little bit risky. Here, I like the trade. It's above the cloud. You don't have the strongest background, but it's gorgeous trade. And look at these trades. Oscillator signal. Again, I have to determine the recalibration law. Long. Long. Right there. So you'll you'll pick up an occasional loser. Um, but it ain't they're they're not common. This is this is just this is the end of the session, and I would be willing to bet there's no volume there at all. I'm not sidestepping it, but you, one factor I can't assess here, right at that turnover, there's almost no volume. So that's the system. Let me see if you have any questions about it. Um, you get the alert. You get all the alerts. And like I said, the best thing to do is you can take all your charts, just fold them up, put them underneath their respective alerts, and only look at the system when the alert fires. As soon as it does, pop it, and you'll have plenty of time to get in the trade. Plenty of time. I can tell you that for sure.
because the alert is going to go off very early. Now, let me just show you what the offer is. And to do that, I'm going to go to my desktop and get in there. I can find it here. I think it's right here. Hang on one second. I'm, I, I'm, listen, I'm not a big salesman here, but I'm telling you, this is the lowest price and the best offer because we're gonna, we're doing a lot of changes for 2019 because we've been beating ourselves up uh, a lot. And this and this is really, if you're interested, this is a great offer. Um, and like I said, I'm the last of the sales, and that's why I don't do any sales. We just drop these. Now, the system is normally $29.99 with the scanner. Um, we're, di we're giving this to you for $899 on a lifetime license. So that means you get all, all upgrades. Up, G-R-A-D-E. If we make the system better, you get the upgrades for free. You're not going to pay for anything. Now you're going to get a month in the live trading room with Gary. Gary's the guy who made 20,000 bucks today. And I'm not kidding. I don't, I don't throw around numbers like that. I just don't. That's what he made today in a live account on the right edge. $20,000. I'm not kidding you. It's almost impossible for me to imagine, but that's what he did. Um, no, I take it back. He made $2,000. I am sorry. Not 20, he made two. My, 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 my deepest apologies. He had 800 on one trade. Uh, and then he made 1,200 addition. He made 2,000 today. Sorry. You're going to be with him. The guy's an, an incredibly good trader. Does not trade the Forex. But in terms of understanding our trading methodology, you're going to really learn it great. Then you're going to have a month in the room with me. Um, you're going to get a 10-module weekly educational training session. Um, training. Very good videos. You're going to get a video tutorial library, access to that. And you have to be one of the first five orders to receive the scanner for free. Because the scanner normally is a thousand, is a thousand bucks. But we're going to just we're going to give it to the first five orders um, for the $8.99 price. And it expires Saturday, December 29th. And then, and we are not going to, you know, not not going to do this again. It's it's sort of our New Year's Eve special. Now let me just um, pull. I'll put this here, and let me just answer any questions that you have. All right, there's a lot of them, so let me go through them. Hang on one second, but I'll I'll go through every question and I'll read every question, so everyone will hear every one of them. Okay, first of all, hey, hey, okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, okay. Craig, the best time, in my opinion, to trade the uh, the Forex markets. Listen, you can almost trade them anytime you like, but to be perfectly honest with you, the best time to trade is the European session. Now, you can that the European session starts at 2 a.m. Eastern Standard, uh, then 3 a.m. Eastern Daylight. But you can trade that all the way through to about 5 o'clock in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning, 7 o'clock in the morning. What makes the Forex a really great market is when it's the only market to trade. Re remember, everyone, everyone is out there looking to make money all the time even the institutional traders. And they can't trade crude oil. They're not going to trade gold. Um, they're not going to trade the E-mini. The NYSC is an open. All those markets are just unavailable. That's where they sink one ton of money into the, um, into the Forex. So it's an early morning instrument, in my opinion. And I just want you to see that 
on the dashboard or the scanner, we have this volume. Now this volume is telling you the, the, the number of lots crossing per unit minute. Every minute it's going to reset. Uh, and so you can actually look here without opening the chart to determine if, if it's trading with enough volume. It, this is really moving actually quite well right now, even though it's two o'clock in the afternoon. This is the, this is the pound dollar. But if this was just a dead market, you just leave it alone. Now, 500 lots a minute is good volume. So it, it's a potentially tradable market. So when you line them up, you're going to be able to look at the moving volume of the minute volume of all of the uh, of all the instruments. I like it early morning. Some people trade it all day, but that to me, that's the best time. You know what, David, that's a great question. And it really depends on the instrument. It really, really does. Um, you know, um, on the euro pound, you would want to see at least 500 lots. But you know what? It's been so long since I've traded the Forex. I'm going to be honest with you. I traded it for months, and we had a Forex trading room. And we did really well, but I stopped it simply out of because I was exhausted. I was trading it at 2 a.m. Eastern. And then I was, um, and then I was, see, this is all trading the same instrument. It's the only one, it's the only chart that's open. Unfortunately, we've got three scanners on the same market. So it's all the same volume. Um, but I just got so tired, I had to close it. So um, let me see, what, let, let me put a scanner on the pound again. Hold on a second. So we can, comp we can compare volume. So I really have to go back. But if you, um, if you go to, if you Google uh, volume, it, it's going to tell you which, which instruments trade with the most volume. Now, I know that, the, that number one are all the dollar crosses by far and away get the most um, volume. And then after that, it's the, um, it's the euro crosses. Then after that, it's the uh, pound crosses. Uh, let me just find the dashboard. So, but if on a specific instrument, I think what you're going to need to do is here it is right here. We can drop this. We can drop this. We can drop this. And here's the two instruments now. And, we, and you can compare, you can compare mid and volume. So I just think all you have to do is do a little bit of homework. And also all you have to do is just watch the market for a few days. And you're going to get a good idea on volume, on how much volume. So, so I don't want to give you misinformation, but uh, volume is really key. Make sure you trade with enough volume. And I think the only loser I took, to, I took today on crude was I took the trade without enough volume. You don't want a small number of traders to control. Right now, it's like they're moving nicely. Um, but I would check that on daily volume, and you can do that really easily on multiple websites. So that's a really good question, David. Yes, Wayne, just 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 send us an email. No, John, it does not exist on market replay. It because remember on market replay you have a right edge, and that you know recalibration only takes place because you're now looking at places in which ninja trader doesn't have the right edge anymore so it so it's assessing forward on um, replay you you still you have the right edge so you're going to get everything tracing out accurately that's a great question by the way oh apple I'm not, I, 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 I just wasn't looking at um, I wasn't looking at uh, the futures. I mean the stocks. That's all. That's all. Ig.
The icky mucus cloud settings, James, are standard. Uh, they are 9, 26, and 52. No different than any other cloud. Uh, really, what, the only thing we're going to modify, um, th this uh, Kajisen and Takinsen, we don't need. We have too many other powerful indicators. We don't need these to clutter our chart. And I want to be able to change the opacity and color of the inside. I'm not changing the metrics. They're just standard uh, ikimoku, ikimuku, ikimushu, mushi pork um, settings. <laughs> no, no, we, Phil, we, we use the dust cloud. We're, I'm going to use it on everything because you get great trades out of the cloud. I've seen them, I've been watching it. I'm not gonna say a thousand percent, but I like it so much, I'm gonna make sure everybody gets it. We, if, if we decide to dump it, we will. Um, I haven't been looking at it long enough to make an absolute assessment. But what I'm looking for, and you're gonna get these trades, um, it, and this is really one of them. It's right here. Is you get you get the move through the cloud, and then the retracement back to the cloud, and then the continuation trade. That's what I'm looking for. I'm not taking a break of the cloud. So I, I, I listen. Listen, I li really did. I listened. I listened to ten hours of videos over the weekend. It was really great. Um, you can tell what a great social life I have. And there's um, a million uh, uh, videos, and some traders are just will trade the break. I don't like trading the break because to me it's, it's just an area of resistance. You break, so big deal. So you break it. I'm not trading a breakout. I want to wait for the market to break out, come back to the icky, icky, icky mushy pork support, and then continue forward. Those trades are stellar on green background bias with everything else with 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 the quan and those were some of gary's trades today and he made two grand not 20 grand i am really sorry that 20 grand did not seem reasonable to me that's why i kept blinking my eyes but it was two thousand dollars today it was an awful lot of money in one day and the guy just had surgery i swear to god 48 hours ago so that's what we're looking for. I think for that, it's maybe very valuable. And if we make it much more, less visible, less intrusive, less buggy to us, I don't think it's going to be a problem, Annie. Yes, Tamir, just give us a call. Yes, it does, Chris. When this goes off, you can make this an audible alert. I've just found, here's the problem with the audible, I, I, I'm going to tell you right now, is that once the alert visual, it keeps ringing. And there's no way, I mean, Sergio may, may be able to in the future program it so it gives one beep, but it's just going to continue to beep. And sometimes if you trade 10 or 12 pairs, even five or six, you're going to get two or three alerting at the same time. That's going to drive you crazy. So you, you, you can use the Audible. I just, have, uh, after, after lots of experience with Audible alerts, I've just decided not to use them. I like the, I like the visuals, but that's totally up to you. David, you know what? We'll do that right after the first of the year, okay? Um, I will give a very, very intensive, and for all the traders that come in, um, uh, potentially from this webinar, I will give a very comprehensive uh, training on how to properly trade Forex, including um, what I will do is I will bone up on volume of each instrument so I can give you a threshold volume per minute to trade when you, when you watch the volume. So it's going to be right after the first of the year, and you're not going to – I mean, basically, we're, we're talking about one one trading session, which is tomorrow. 
and tomorrow's not a great day to trade. So right after the first of the year that week, I will do it, David. Tamir, we have not automated it yet, but right after the first of the year, that's our goal. Our goal is the automated system is going to take the perfect trade, and I'll show you the perfect trade. It's right here. This is the perfect trade. You've got the three line. You've got the oscillator. You've got the 15, the 50 green. The 15 can be yellow or green. You've got, you need one or two dots. The automated system would have put you in right here and kept you in right here. The full extent of this move, that's a perfect entry. And that's, you have to take that trade. I mean, you don't have to, but you should. It's 15 pips. That's what the automated system is going to look for. And it's going to look for it on almost an unlimited number of Forex markets. We just don't want to trade thinly traded Forex markets. So, We'll have the auto trader on during a period of time. It's not, it's, it's going to require an oscillator entry. It's, it's not going to take, like here is another trade for the, for the automated system right there. Dual dots, halo, and move up. And Sergio, and we already have, we know what, we know what we're looking for. All we need to do is program, and we're going to do that right after the first of the year. I mean, it, I think it's going to destroy the Forex markets. Because when you get these kind of trades, they almost always work. 80% or more will work. Uh, Tamir, to create a dashboard for the alerts of the scanners. Yeah, well, well, listen, this really is the dashboard. And the reason we have it like this is simply because everybody trades different pairs. And all you have to do is stack them like this. And you really have sort of a dashboard. I, I know what you're, you're looking for. It's like one big square. Um, this is just the way we've kind of elected to do it config configuration wise, but I don't see any downside to it. I, I, I truly don't. And here's the thing that I like about this is you can separate them and you can stick the market that you're looking at right underneath that particular. Um, so you don't have to keep all the markets open. So I am going to yeah, close it a little bit too much, but so I kind of like it this way better. We could listen with programming and, and, a, and a few weeks, Sergio could make, she could, could change it. But I really like the fact that I could take the Euro pound, which is right here and put it right underneath my market. And so when I get an alert, I can just pop the, pop the chart. So all I've got to do is just keep, I, I mean, I, I don't have to move my focus. And there's no reason to look at the chart without an alert. If there's no alert, you're not training. So move to the right edge here. You see how you have an alert? You have an alert because background bias is green, the quant is green, the 50 is green, the 15 is green. You've got the dots. Now, this is way, way into the move. Likely you got the alert in the entry right here. Because this was pulled to the right by two candles. If you didn't, you can always take the trade. I'm going to this is what I'm going to teach you on a valid entry on the second candle. Absolutely no reason not to. And that's absolutely a trade. Because this is definitely yanked one candle. This is definitely going to come back one candle. And you've got the entry right here. So once you take the trade, the alert's done. So, But it's still going to flash. So it's going to flash until you lose all this. And the reason 
is as far as the system is concerned, there's always the potential for a second. We know there isn't because it needs a pullback and a down oscillator signal before you can get another up. But all you all you can do, all you have to do is just leave it, close the chart up. No, you don't have another potential trade. You've got your winner. And you're going to wait to see the pink background before you take the next alert. And this is, these are the things I go over in the webinar. It's really very, very simple. Now, the auto is just going to take this entry if it aligns. It's got no leeway. It doesn't need any leeway because it's trading too many markets. No, 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 that's okay. No, no, no problem, Matt. We'll send you a link. Okay, that's a really good question. You have to get on NinjaTrader, only NinjaTrader 8 now supports live trading. Is that true, Rory? Live trading on Ninja 8 only? Yeah. You have to get, this system is all formatted for 8. So you don't have to worry whether you're trading 7 or 8. I just projected 7 um, because I'm not trading this system live right now. I don't, I, I'm not, I, I don't be honest, I'm not trading Forex live because I can't get up at 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, and we made great money today trading futures. And you're going to be in my room. You're going to be in Gary's room. Um, you, you're going to learn this trade methodology solid and cold. Um, but if you want to trade it live, you have to be on NT8. And we'll, 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 Sergio will do all the configuration. Set up your dashboards, your scanners, set up everything for you on NT8. So, and then um, your, your data feed. Now, the data feed should be provided to you by your FX broker, whoever that broker is. Now, um, uh, now Ninja, I think they, what is, does Ninja use Global, Rory? Forex.com and Awanda. Um, uh, what about the brokers? Yeah, there's two, there's uh, Forex.com, uh, and Awanda, and they both use huge clearing houses. So they're both very, very safe. And it's not the broker that handles your money and holds it. It's the clearing house. And if they're very, very big clearing houses, your money is safe. But I always recommend when you trade Forex or futures, every week you take out your profit. You never leave it in. So you got, you've, got lot, you've got plenty of options for live trading on the Forex. can I use to trade for futures instead of Forex? This platform is completely optimized for Forex. If you want to trade the futures, you, we, 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 we will give you the futures platform, but it's a completely different platform. All you have to do is send us an email and we'll send you a different platform. Um, you can't use this platform. All the quants are Forex quants. Everything is configured here for Forex. See these dots? These are all correlative Forex markets. And if you try to put this on a, on a futures market or stocks, these things would all go crazy. They wouldn't work. But you can get the market, the, the, you know, the, you can have the stocks or the futures or the Forex. It's up to you. Ray, I, I have you know. Listen, I, somebody already asked me that. I have to find that out. It's been so long, and I'll get that data. It's very easy to get. I'll get it on um, uh, off of um, off of Google, and I'll find out the average volume per day on all of the diff, the, the different forex pairs. It's it's not hard to find. So I'll let you know, Ray. And uh, you're going to get a great feel when you see the market. But I'll be able to give you that information. That's not hard to get. Hey, Eddie, my pal. I'm so glad you're here. 
Um, I feel like I feel like my accomplice is here. I didn't, Al. Um, and you know what? I'm not going to do that in this webinar, but I will do it tomorrow in the room because I have to redo all my data feeds, Al. But uh, you know, if you're not, you know what? I'll do it for you really quickly, just because. Hold on. I, I just, I just don't want to. Uh, I want to boring people here, and this is a little off base here. Now, this is the last we're going to be able to look at the forex, because I'm going to complete change the feed, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the DAX. So I have to disconnect my forex feed. And that's going to stop everything here. And let me connect. Let me just move this to the DAX, for, the DAX first. Let me drop these. Now we're getting no live data now coming in. See, it's dead. And let me change this to the DAX. Now the DAX is a killer instrument. Um, hold on one sec before I do. Let me, um, I think I have to rotate the DAX month. I don't think it's trading. Um, I don't think it's trading this month. Um, let me find out what month it's trading. Hang on a minute. Let me bring my ninja over. I'm sorry. Let me bring my. Uh, let me let me let me find out the DAX contract. DAX contract. Is ninja usually did a great job of telling you what month it is. Uh, but it, it DAX C O N T. You, you're really going to be stunned. I mean, the DAX is a, is an unbelievable market. I'm also have to going to have to change the template to the DAX template. Um, DAX contract date. If you want to see the DAX, I'll show it to you. Um, it looks like it's uh, September. Let me just make sure. The DAX. It's DUI uh, on bar charts. That's the code. Let me just see if that's September. Yeah, it's September 18. So let me just switch the instrument to September, and then I'll show you the DAX. Now, if you don't know how to do it, you just put in FDAX here. Search. Roll this to, that's not, it can't be September 18. That's, that's not right. Hold on a minute. Here it is, DAX rollover date. I got it. Here we go. The eighth calendar of the eighth calendar day of the month. Um, the rollover is on March eighth, June eighth, September eighth, December eighth. So it rolled over. Um, so I think we're three months. So let's go to the March contract and put that in. And I'll leave the other one in. And let me, I have no data feed connected right now. So it's not going to, nothing's going to explode. And I'm going to move to the DAX. Okay, we're not getting any data for it because I have no data feed. Um, let me add the data feed.
Not for, I pay for this data feed. This is a kinetic data feed. All right, it's connected and the chart's loading. See, now it's, it's bringing up a default for all of the uh, for all of the of the uh, pound crosses and because I don't have that data feed anymore. But that's OK. We can just click them out. And you'll see the DAX chart and the DAX charts a killer. I mean, it's really an amazingly great instrument to trade. The only thing that you have to be is you have to have uh, a lightning bolt in your index index finger that touches your mouse. I mean, it doesn't give you any leeway to trade. You've got seconds to trade. Now, we need to put in the right template. That's why the dots are all orange. This quant is still pretty good. It's not, but it's still not accurate. We're getting money flow here, and we shouldn't. Uh, let me put in the DAX template. I'm only, I'm only doing this for you, Al. Uh, look, let me put it. Let me put in the DAX. Hold on. Oh my God, the Ninja Trader just collapsed. All right, I'll reboot it. Let me ask it. Let me let me ask any other questions. I'm sorry, um, Al. This is what Ninja Trader does sometimes. It's a real pain in the neck. Let me just go. I'll, but I'm going to go back to it. No, D Donald, you can trade it in the afternoon or the evening. Don't get me wrong. Um, the, the person who asked me the question, when was the best time to trade it? I think it's the European session. If you've got volume on the instrument, there's no reason why you can't trade it in the morning or in the evening. In fact, in the evening, when all the other markets are closed, when the E-mini is closed for a while, crudes down, Volume is terrible. It's an instrument that you can definitely trade. Just make that volume assessment. That's all you need. It's right in the trade scanner. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> it's the Mugu Guy Pan uh, Cloud, Eddie. It, you know what? It's from column A, not column B. Thank you. God bless you, too, Phil. And Happy New Year to you, too. Thank you. Just, Joe, you can just call Rory. He'll take care of you. Or send him an email. Yeah, that's it, Calvin. You buy it. I, I, I mean, it kind of cracks me up. That $96 4X robot is going to make you rich. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, buddy. I think our auto is going to do it. I truly do. Or I would not even proffer it. Um, and you see the entries it's going to take, um, but it's still going. It's still going to. We still going to have to do a lot of beta testing on it. And, we, and what we do is we do six months of forward testing. We do market replay testing forward, and serve you a software that can calculate the number of wins. I mean, we're, we're going to really beta test the heck out of it before we release it. It does not slow down Ninja at all. Motion. Remember, um, it's very system resources um, free. It really does not use much system resources. The only thing, here's what you can't do. If you have 12 charts up, you only have two or three days to load. You know, there's a section in there that says days to load. Don't load 15 days. If, and you only need two days to load. If you load two days only, it'll run all the charts. <laughs> Thank you, Clark. Clark, you, you, Robert. I didn't get a chance to do it. You can. Uh, I one of the JPEGs I sent out was a ten Unirenko trade. Um, I put it on. You're either going to get it now, or you're going to get it. I'm telling you, this is time frame independent. If you trade a ten or a, a twenty Unirenko, is a very, very long time frame. 
uh, a, a 20. That's a 20 pip candle. And that's a very, very big candle. I would not recommend trading that. But um, you can trade a 10 Unirenko with no problem on 12 instruments. And, and so help me, that was a 196 tick trade. Now let me just, I'm gonna try one more time and I'm gonna go back and show you the DAX. I've got the instrument in there already. I just have to change the data feeds. Now here's, here's the E-mini and I'll show you the trades we took this morning on the E-mini. They may still even be there. E-mini, we had three trades. We had uh, two, uh, three trades and three winners. Now, it's not the 4X, but, man, they were, they were good trades. Now, let me find the first trade. Um, see, the first trade was right here. And... Uh, our three line was perfectly, perfectly set up. And this was a full winner. Went all the way out to here, actually. We were out at three points. That was trade number one. Now, trade number two, we were done at 10 o'clock. So it's got to be before 10 o'clock. I think was right here for this full winner. And trade number three, I believe was right here. I'm not positive, but the, we, we had three winners and out by 10 o'clock. Uh, I'm trying to see if we got a better one. I might be wrong on that third trade. Um, it came through the cloud. No, we were done. We were already done. We had three perfect setups and three entries. Um, and this, this, this shows you how difficult it is because these were all magenta um, beforehand. And both of these trades were coming out of the cloud. The cloud was above us. That was a good trade. Now let me just drop the data feeds and I'll quickly show you the DAX. I'm gonna disconnect CQG. And that's the end of that. And let me just put in the DAX. Now we've got no data feed, so it should load with nothing. And now I'm gonna connect the data. Oh, we've got the data feed, it should load. Well, let's hope it just loads without collapsing. Sometimes when you switch instruments on, on Ninja, and, you know, you change a chart in the middle, it will, Act weird. Okay, we got it. There's the DAX. And there's the DAX scanner. And let's take this. Now, I, the only thing I have to do is I have to put in the DAX template. It'll take a second. These are all different quants, um, all different dots. And I just got to reload. You can, you can see it's not a simple platform. It assimilates a lot of data uh, from multiple markets, multiple time frames. Here we go. And the dots are, are just not functioning retrospectively. Um, and I'm not going to fight with them. I don't care if they're all orange right here. Let's just let's just look at the setups. Now the DAX is a, it gives you incredible setups. It's really just a matter of speed. Now the DAX starts trading at 2 a.m. And at 2 a.m you can get amazing trades, but you also have to deal with slippage and you have to be very careful with slippage. 
but you've got to be very quick. Now, I wouldn't have taken this entry. Here's our key quant. I just want you to know that this is the quant we need to trade the DAX. This line, one up from the bottom. So I wouldn't have taken that trade. Now, I think we're a little bit too far down. I'm just really conservative here. It's a great entry in retrospect, but I don't think I would have taken it in real time. Now, here's the trade right here. No, you don't have the major quant. Take it back. Let's keep looking. When you get a great setup, you're going to get a great setup. This is just, I wouldn't trade any of this. And there's nothing here. Not yet. Nope. I mean, to me, this is just too far down. Or I'm trading it to support. Now, here's where I would take a trade. If I had, no, nope, I don't have, right here. I wouldn't take this continuation. It's too far off the 50. I want to trade really tight to the 50. Right here is your trade. Pull back. Here's your major, and there's a full winner. Now, remember about the DAX. The DAX is 12 and a half euros a tick. If you get 15 ticks on three contracts and you scale out on the DAX on our ATM, you make about $435. Now, that's 21 ticks because it's 10 and a half DAX points. There's two ticks to a point. Now, this is a great trade. You just got to enter on the second. You just got to enter on this candle. That's all. Now, the DAX is a whirlwind. It's going to give you a million setups. Now, the reason this is a great trade, it's, it's called our pivot breaker. And what happens when you snap a pivot is right here, there's buyers. Now, when price comes down here, it hits buyer's turn comes down, it hits, buyer's turn. It comes down, it hits. This time, it moves through. But there's always some residual buyers in this pivot. There's just more sellers. So it's almost like buying a retracement because a lot of times when trades break a pivot, it snaps and flies. So you need a two-thirds candle close below the pivot. That's how our assessment is done. That's the pivot breaking candle right here, and that's your entry. Pivot breakers are great entries. Now, if you have the Calunis for it and you hold all the way, This is an 80 pip, this is an 80 tick, 80 point. That's 160 um, tick trade at $12.50 a euro. This is easily a $1,500 trade, maybe even more than that. But you got to hold through this one up candle and you're in all the way. Now, where you would take it out? Man, when you're on this big of a runner, you're probably going to lose 15 ticks or so. Not points, but ticks are at the bottom. But this is an incredible trade, and it's this pivot snapper. And just out of curiosity, uh, 12.50, I don't want to, times, let's just say 60 pips, 60 ticks. That's 750 no, I can't be right. It's it's uh, 60 ticks, 60 points, 60 ticks um, on one contract, 60 ticks times 12.5 is $750 on one con 750 euros on one contract. So you, if, you, if you multiply that times 
and that didn't work. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very big number on one contract. And it, it just goes on like that. Now, right here is your pivot snapper again. You don't have the three line, but I, I would bet you did in real time. This one's a little tougher because you don't have the best pink background bias. It's more discretionary, but you have your absolute quant that you need right here. Here's your pivot snapper again. And here's your first, you get a first target. On the way up here, I don't see an entry. Now, again, I, I can't stress more. The key here is you don't see losers. And I, I showed you the, the couple of tr trades that did lose. Now, here's the hit of support and bounce. Here's the hit of support and bounce. We got to wake, and here's the pivot breaker right here. Snap through. And this is a very lucrative trade at 12 and a half euros per tick. Don't trade it. We never trade into support. There's your trade. Trade right around it. There's your pivot snapper. It's actually right here. First target, easy. First target's only six ticks. This is two, four, six, eight, ten ticks. There's your pivot snapper. It's actually right here. You don't have the three line, but if we did, get you another win. Here, here's your pivot snapper and another win. And here you got nothing. So, I mean, you have a million wins. It's five o'clock in the morning. It's time to go back to sleep. Okay, I mean, I, I just wanted to show you, Robert, that it's a tremendously powerful instrument on the DAX. You can kill it on the DAX, but it moves incredibly fast. Look at the times under here. 504, 504, 505, 506, 506, 506. You got to be lightning fast on the mouse and you got to be prepared for uh, two ticks or three ticks of slippage. You've got to adjust quick. And if you do, you've got yourself a great trade. Okay, Tamir. Gary's room hours, Clark. He's going to start at 4 a.m. I, I don't know when he's going to end. Today he traded for two and a half hours, and I swear he made $2,000. And if he's going to trade that lucratively, I mean, he's not trading a half session. If he thinks he can make money, he, you know, he doesn't stop. And he, and his, he, he takes a 10 tick stop and he rarely takes a full loser. And, um, um, you know, you, 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 listen, you get to go into his room for nothing. If you come aboard, I, I, I think he's going to give us lots of winners. I get his performance every day off of his back end. He I don't want to say how well he does. It's amazing um, because I don't, I'd rather under promise and overperform. I, re I really. Happy New Year to Rory. Rory, Happy New Year to you, Rory. Happy New Year, Sergio. Feliz Navidad. Sergio said, no comprende. No comprende, Phil. <laughs> okay, the NDT. I didn't want to talk about it for uh, the NDT. But the NDT for the for the uh, forex is awesome, David. Because what you do is you set a one tick, you set a one tick trigger, and then a one tick pullback, and eliminate the pip spread. And if you need more information, you you'll have to call me. But basically, what you do is you know you don't get filled at price. You get filled at, like, if you want to take this and this is your entry, you're not going to be able to get that price. You're going to have to take, since you're buying, you have to take the ask, which may be a pip or two higher. So what you do is you set the NDT to trigger one pip above and then fill you on a one pip pullback. 
So what you do is you take a pip back off the spread. If the pip spread is one tick, you get in at the right price and eliminate the pip spread. It's tremendously great for trading the for trading the uh, forex. And you you just you just and let me tell you the way forex moves. You're almost always going to get that one pip trigger and that one pip pullback and fall and and fill. Now the move up is a stop limit. The move back. It's just a market order, which is great because sometimes it'll give you two ticks of pullback. Gary's room, Robert, is he's going to be trading at 4 a.m. And he trades. He likes crude. He likes the euro currency. Right now, he's trading the 6E. He may trade the DAX. I'm, you know, that's really I'm leaving it up to him. Um. He trades a little slightly different methodology than I do. But if you saw the offer, you're going to come into that room. And he's a tremendously good trader. Because you get a month in my room and you're going to get a month in Gary's room. So you're really going to get two out. You're going to get two trading rooms a day if you can handle it. And I hope you can. For a month, you're going to be saturated with learning how to trade the system. And you will absolutely know how to trade the scanner because so I'm, I'm gonna i will teach you how in a webinar so that's a lot for 899 i really think it's a good deal and if i, if I was on the other end i would buy it and i'm not a marketer but we're not going to give it away at, at that price i swear it again because uh in, in 2019 we are going to adjust and i don't like to push but that's really the truth Okay, David, for Forex volume, um, that it varies by Forex pair. Sure, absolutely. Have much more volume. During, absolutely, David. Uh, you know, what David is saying is, is that the volume is going to vary by pair and by time of day. And, and basically, basically I'm, I'm agreeing with you, David. And what I'm saying is what you have to do is you have to look at the – you will, listen, you want to look at the average volume per, day, per 24-hour period um that crosses and then look and see if during the period of time that you're trading it you're, you're you're crossing twice average volume per minute or three times average volume per minute then you know that you're trading in a great market environment so really saying the same thing dave you got to look at the time of day and you got to look at the forex pair of any year you know what, Stephen, we do. Um, is there any way that you could contact Rory? Can you just give me a yes or a no on that? Dr. Key's great. Um, he's, he's been a killer. Um, can you, is it possible to call us? I'll put, here's our number. 786-210-2000. Here's our number. 713-786-713-5276 or just send us an email uh david and he will um i'm sorry uh steve and he'll give it to you oh no pro no problem now listen you can trade the dax for one ton of profit but you've got to be I'm, I'm telling you up front you got to be very fast and you got to be prepared to take slippage if you can make those adjustments really quick and anticipate that you're going to get slipped. Sometimes you won't, but anticipate you will. If, if you get six ticks of slippage, deal with it because the DAX is likely to go 15, 16, 17 ticks. You're going to have to make the adjustments. If you can do that out, you can trade the DAX very profitably. Our system is very unlikely to walk you into a loser. Just be conservative and take those DAX trades close to the 50 and let the other ones go and you'll get those big runners. I mean, you got that one trade for what I, I can't remember the number of pips. You're done for the day. One contract was eight with was seven or eight hundred dollars. You traded that with three contracts. I mean, you know, you, you've got two thousand bucks. So just be conservative. 
It's March. Thank you, Chris. Okay, Rob, let me answer. Let me get you. Can we can we get the data feed from another source other than say forex.com so we can use the Ninja platform as an information source to take trades? She, absolutely, you can, uh, Robert. Um, what we can do is we can get you a one month, it's maybe even two months, a free data feed from, um, from FXCM. After that, you may have to pay a nominal fee um, to Kinetic to run the FX data feed just as a standalone off the NinjaTrader demo so you can trade another platform. A lot of traders do it. Um, so you're not alone. And let me get to a second. Lastly, do you offer any split? Uh, Robert, yes. If you call Rory, he'll he'll give it to you. Okay? You've just got to contact Rory because we don't, we don't have anything set up. Okay, Rob? Okay, I got your email. I'll get Rory to email you. I got okay. I got you, Robert. I I and I, I got your email. That's okay, Al. Great, great, Donald. Hey, oh, Gary's our new trader, Robert. His name is Gary Banks. No problem, Al. No problem. I can't, Robert. We don't really, we don't really have one. But, but, but Rory, Rory will take care of it. He's excellent. Great today. Great, Steve. I'm glad you talked to him. I mean, Rory's just a really nice guy, really good guy. Listen, all of you, thanks so much for giving me your time. And I wish you, a, you know, all a very, very happy, healthy new year. Um, uh, you know, maybe may bring you a lot of um, health, happiness, and wealth. And I will do my best uh, to make you guys money. Um, it's my goal. Uh, I think we're going to make a grand this week in the live trading room in only three crazy trading sessions that are very hard to trade. We're right there. We're right around. We're just over 800 bucks in two, in two sessions. Um, we'll make our we'll make our 1000 tomorrow. And that's my goal. My goal is one on a small number of contracts in our live trading room, a thousand a week. That's fifty thousand dollars a year. If you trade more contracts. You got two thousand dollars a week and just do it consistently. And I spoke to Gary today. His goal also is to is to go after on a small number, one thousand bucks a week consistently. Only this guy made two thousand today. So um, whatever you do, I, I, I just again, I wish you a lot of health, happiness and and, uh, and success for the coming new year. Take care. Have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. Bye-bye and thank you all.